Hello everybody and welcome back to it or rather welcome to it. I don't know. I don't know But oh my goodness welcome welcome in the new year. It is 2024 and we just bless God that we made it back into this year Or oh, we made it into this year. Oh my goodness. I haven't done this in a while <laughs> Anyway, hello everybody, welcome to it. My name is Michelle Kuleni. for those who do not know me. If you're here for the first time, you just randomly clicked on this video and you're just like, who is this lady? Let me, let me hear what she got to say. Welcome and thank you so much for trusting me with your time. I don't take that for granted. And to my returning subscribers, to my community, my audience, your support, your love, your patience is everything. Thank you so much for coming back and for giving me your time once again i am back child i'm back in the new year and god is so good i just wanted to do this video <clears throat> as just a, a hey i'm alive you know a, a young psa a young public service announcement you know that i'm still alive i'm still here by the grace of god i think you know 2023 was just so big was so Half the time I couldn't fathom what was going on in 2024. Not in a, I, I was like going crazy. I didn't know what was going on, but in a, it was such a monumental shift for me. And I mean, I dropped a bit of content last year, but nothing like normal because I think even my dropping of content was a little bit, not gonna say disobedient, because when I did share something, it was for the benefit, you know, of God had told me to, to share whatever I shared. But it was so random and sporadic and, you know, and there's a reason for that because it was not my season to say anything. It was not the time, you know, for me to be creating content in that capacity and in that way. And I firmly believe that now, in hindsight, I can say <laughs> that God was genuinely just isolating me. And that's something I'm going to touch on in the video, you know, but I just want to share with you guys. Obviously, I can't tell you what happened the whole of 2023. This will take forever. The video will be too long. But I think I just want to give you highlights and just share where my head is at in terms of creating content and the direction that I believe God is taking me within this space. Um, yeah, that's just what this video is about. It's just to kind of bring you guys back into my, my world and actually allow you into allow me into your world because that's what this actually is i think I've, I've, I've come to appreciate the patience that you guys have with me as a content creator and and not you know the inconsistencies and i know i get some dms on instagram it's like hey misha we miss you when you're coming back are you okay you know i think that that has been the biggest not driving force but it's been so encouraging the messages i get from y'all the, the the encouragement some of you send me beautiful prayers. Some of you are just like, hey, Misha, we're th thinking of you, praying for you. And you have no idea how amazing it is to see those kinds of messages. So thank you to every single one of you who have been keeping me and my family in your prayers. May God bless you, you know, abundantly. May his grace and favor locate you uh, 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 in whatever season that you're in. So I think number one that I wanted to talk about, I have a little notebook next to me that I'm going to keep checking because like I have to write things down now, otherwise I'm gonna be scattered. Like it's just my new reality, which is something that I'm definitely going to be touching on as well is, like I said earlier, there's been such a big shift and this can maybe apply to you. You might not have had a baby and gotten married, but change is, <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit just taught me so much about accepting change, about not fighting or not resisting change. It's so important because I felt myself fighting and resisting change so much along the way last year because of everything that was kind of shifting, you know, having to figure myself out within the context of wife and mother, you know, and having motherhood and being a, you, like it, it takes everything out of you i kid you not like it's i always say this it's the most beautiful experience it's the most beautiful privilege but it is costly the blessing of god is costly here's the thing though the bible will say that and i'm paraphrasing it but when god gives a blessing 
it adds, you know, he doesn't bring sorrow. And I've seen that in that a blessing from God brings so much joy. Like I watch my little bundle and my blessing and I watch my husband and I watch this, this life that we have. And I'm so blessed, dude. Like I'm so overjoyed. But that doesn't take away from the challenges within the blessing. And I think maybe, you know, this is for someone who's also still hoping for marriage and praying about having a child and, and whatever you're praying for and, and hoping and believing God for over your life or in your life, please understand that just because it's a blessing from God doesn't mean it's going to come. The, the lights, I'm using natural light, so the light is like because of the clouds, so bear with, bear with it. I hope it doesn't distract you too much. But the blessing comes with a challenge. You know, there's a burden to the blessing. And I always say this, there's, there's a burden to every blessing. And if you don't pray and seek grace to handle the burden, you're going to end up being swallowed by the blessing. The blessing will consume you. And I found myself along the way last year being consumed by the blessing in the sense that it just kind of, it just became everything in that I could not, I didn't have time to spend with the Lord. I, I was so defeated, I was so tired because I poured everything into my little baby and whatever was left I poured into my husband. And then half the time there was very little to pour into myself. So I was always kind of like running on empty, but my husband is so beautiful because he made it a point to pour into me as well, you know. Um, so it, 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 was that, it was that kind of a, you know, a, a challenge last year, but God was so good because he says, I need to keep you in this space because there's something I'm doing. You know, and in that space, I don't want you to say anything to the outside world. I don't want you to create content. That's not the focus. You know, so I say that to say that resisting change for me created so much tension. Ne? It created so much tension because I couldn't fully commit to what God was having me do in this season. Because I was resisting. It's weird because not resisting the season because I was fully welcoming of the season. I was fully accepting and very grateful for the season. But the, the difficulties of the season had me haggling, trying to and wishing for a past season. Does that make sense? So you wish for pre-mommy, pre-marriage, you know, benefits and, 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 and freedoms, but now you're in a different season and those things don't apply and if they do apply they apply in a different context and they're not going to look the same why am i saying that the bible speaks about a form of glory letting go of a form of glory because what happens is we become so wrapped up in the past we miss the, the present we miss the blessing of the present we miss the gift that is now we miss what god is doing now because our minds are so stuck on what he did once before why because this season is challenging but last time or last season I, I had it i was handling it i was good but in this season god required so much of me to lean on him and it was interesting man. it was interesting but he was so faithful. God is so... I think that the biggest thing I'm, I was learning in this season and who God was revealing himself to be to me is just a faithful father. A faithful father and a gracious father. You have no, you have no idea how many times I, God had to remind me that I have grace for you in this season. I have grace for you when, you, when you're not, you know, tip-top shape. I have grace for you when you are not reading the Bible, you know, every day I have grace for you because I understand and I put you in the season. So I, I already knew what was going to happen in the season. You're acting like, I don't know, you're taking me by surprise. So it's just been so beautiful to learn grace, to accept grace in this context. Because those of who are close to me and those who know me, I'm, I, I love to work for the Lord. I want to serve God, you know. And this season, God was kind of showing me the Mary Martha situation, if you remember the story, where Martha complains to Jesus and says, Ah, but Jesus, my sister's not helping me serve you guys. And Jesus, is like, nah, Mary's got it right. She's sitting at my feet and, and gleaning what I have to say. No one can take that away from her. And there's nothing wrong with serving the kingdom and working for God, but you need to understand that the most important, the foundational principle is being at his feet first. Everything you do as service needs to flow from being at the feet of God. And what I've noticed in my 
sabbatical in my season of isolation and in in my wilderness of sorts where god has just kind of put me you know and just covered me under his wing i've noticed that a lot of people right now are avoiding the season of being hidden are avoiding the season of sitting at god's feet because you're chasing instagram fame and you're chasing being relevant and you're chasing tiktok fame so you you want to go and act like you're working for the kingdom of god but honestly you haven't sat at the feet of god and you hear it by the things people say you just listen people could be speaking about jesus but you hear uh -uh. there's very little revelation if anything there's no i'm not going to say anointing but you know but you're just speaking for the sake of speaking because you have ulterior motives. So I've been learning to just sit at God's feet and not have my sitting have a result of working, you know? So it's been a very interesting time, you know, just spending time with God and, 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 and hanging with my baby boy and raising my son. God has shifted my mind so much. You know, when I tell you about just being still, the benefit of being still. When God says, be still and know that I am God, it's more than just passive sitting. It's, it's yes, not sit, don't do anything. It's sit, seek me, but don't feel like you have to do anything beyond that. It's okay. Don't feel like you have to fight. Don't feel like you have to strive. Just be still and know. Misha, just be okay with the season that I've put you in. You know, when, when, I just, when I first became a mom, I felt very called to just be a stay-at-home mother, to be a homemaker, to take care of my household, to raise my son, and to, to tend to my husband. And that was where the tension was because former me, you know, was very much an independent woman. I thought that my value was in running my three businesses and to do, doing all of these amazing things, and there's nothing wrong with that. But in this season, God was saying, be still. Serve your household. Raise your son. You're not missing anything out there. The world has us so mangled, you know, and so distorted in terms of priorities. But that's a conversation for another day. I'll talk about my homemaking revelation journey in another video. But it's just been so beautiful to understand what God means when he says, be still. Just relax, dude. I got you. You know, be still and know. Because in the stillness, that's when God transforms your mind. Right? In the stillness, he said, get rid of social media. Get rid of Instagram. Like, just, just remove, remove, remove these things. Be still. And in the stillness, in the wilderness, if you go read, you know, the book of Exodus, and you see the journey of the Israelites, God had to remove them. And I always say this, you know this. He removes them from Egypt before he gets them to Canaan, to, to the land of the promise, before he puts them there. He lets them go through 40 stations. He takes them through 40 locations where he's renewing their mind. Each station and each place that they stop is where God is pruning, God is removing, he's, un, he's making them unlearn and he's making them relearn. And I felt like for me last year was a time for just, it was, it was a wilderness for me. It was a location where God had me stop and say, be still so I can prune, so I can renew, so I can restore, so I can recalibrate and reconfigure you. Because in the busyness is not the time for transformation. Transformation and, 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 and recalibration happens in the quiet place. It happens in the hidden place. You know, it, it, it happens in the hidden place so that when you go out, now it's like, oh, snap, what's going on? That's a, now you're stepping out in a new level, in a new dimension, because you allowed God to hide you, and you allowed God to renew your mind, and you allowed God to reconfigure you. Because as we grow, even within the faith, there are things that we adopt, and there are attitudes that we learn. And, and in, in, you know, me, in my knowledge of God, because I've been walking with God, you know, since I was a kid, but accurately, properly, I think from the age of 16, when I kind of properly devoted myself unto God towards the end of high school, beginning of varsity. And that journey, you know, I thought I knew God, you know, but I knew that he takes you from grace to grace and, and, and strength to strength. And last year was a time for him to reconfigure and say, you knew me in that capacity. You knew me as a young girl, as a young woman, 
finding yourself and growing in the ministry and doing these things but now you're a woman now you're a mother now you're a wife there's a new level of grace that i need to unpack there's a new level of revelation and there's a new dimension i need to show you but i can't show you those things when you're out there doing the most don't get it twisted i'm still gonna use you i'm still gonna make you you're still gonna do the most for my kingdom but i need to every now and again you gotta come back the bible will say that jesus left the 12 and retreated to the mountain or he retreated to go and pray. Sometimes you just got to retreat. And if you don't retreat, God will force you to retreat. And that's not the fun one. When he, when he forces your retreat, it ain't going to be cute. So you just need to allow. It goes back to that thing. Don't resist when God calls you back. Because if you resist, you're going to do things in your own power. You're going to do things in your own might. And when you do that, you're operating in pride. And God doesn't, doesn't endorse pride. The Bible says that God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. So we need to check ourselves. So yeah, that was, that was another thing that I kind of learned going on last year, what, where my head was at. You know, my perspective changed on so many things. My perspective changed on social media. My perspective changed on how much I share. Because I feel like, you know, and obviously this is just me, doesn't have to apply to everyone. But the age of social media, which can be good if used correctly, but has created a vain generation in that everything we do is so performative, or most of us do is so performative. I think about the concept of vlogs, uh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with them. I enjoy watching them, but just the performance aspect of it. And not everyone does that. I know when I did my vlogs, it wasn't really performative. I shot it in the moment and whatever. But I think to some extent when people are performing these acts for reels and shorts and you're thinking you're not actually living in the present because everything you do is, is now being governed by I need to shoot this. Everything is content. And I don't think that's right. <laughs> that's just my perspective shift. You know, it, it becomes very much me centered. It's no longer Christocentric. And that's what God is leading me to that Christocentric, Christocentric. It must be about Jesus. And if we evaluate a lot of the content that we consume and the people that we follow, you find that it's, it's got very little to do with Jesus. It's very much self-exalting. -exal it's very much, this is what I did. This is how I did it. Oh yeah, and God helped me. So it's me-centered and oh yeah, I tag God in. And because they mention God, you're like, yay, she said Jesus, my favorite Christian influencer. What? Right? So we need to do better. Or that's what just I've been led in just being better and doing better in not feeling like it's about you man. social media makes everything about you and God is like it's so vain because even when you're a Christian influence and now you're creating content or you're only spending time with God for the sake of creating content and that's evil it's no longer good it's no longer godly so if you are a Christian content creator and you, you're wanting to share your faith with, with the people of God, please inspect your motives. Please inspect your motives. Why are you doing it? Did God really tell you to do it? Or are you just, yeah, Papa, you're craving fame. You want what other people have. You want external validation. There's things we need to think about, you know. So I have a very much a changed perspective on what is important. My priorities are very different. <laughs> You know, my priorities are super different. And, and I just praise God for that because I've come to a place of now accepting that. But it, it took a minute to get to this place. I won't lie. It took a while to get to this place. You know, I want to say, as I close this off, because I know my son is probably going to wake up soon. But I want to close this off with saying that in this new year, if God is calling you to isolation, don't fight it. Don't fight isolation. Don't fight the wilderness. Don't fight the place of hardship. Because it's in that place where God renews you, where God reconfigures you, where God transforms and renews your mind. Because we live in a time where everything is just, we're just so busy. There's so much going on. You know, even in the removing of TikTok and removing of these social media spaces, it's because, okay, let me, let me rephrase that. Let me reframe it. I was doing a thing where I was trying to find the right kind of cartoons and, and, and content for my son to consume on, on when he does have screen time because I'm, I'm also trying not to have him have too much screen time so i was looking at these cartoons and learning about how they affect the child's brain because remember if you're a one-year-old and you're seeing pictures for example there are cocoa melon and these ding, 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 these kinds of cartoons 
and the child's brain receptor, which is not yet developed, right? And you expose them to countless hours of these fast moving images. And I once sat down and I actually watched Coco Melon and I'm not dogging the brand. I'm just, this is just the closest, you know, thing I can think of. And if you sit and you watch it, the scene changes every two seconds. The colors are super bright, very vibrant. And I found myself so overwhelmed just looking at it. And then I was like, man, I am so grown. I am 26 years old and I'm overwhelmed looking at how fast this thing is moving, how loud the sounds are, how vibrant the colors are. My brain was like, man, what is going on? And that was when I realized that now imagine a one-year-old little brain still trying to learn the dopamine, the hits, the th every three seconds something new is coming and we wonder why we have a generation of kids with ADHD and, and, and attention deficits is because we've put them in front of screens and their brains are trying to keep up with a new thing every two seconds. I say that to say, even with us, because we're not watching cartoons, now we have four different types of, of social medias. You've got X, you've got, you've got Instagram, you've got TikTok, you've got WhatsApp, and you're filtering in between these four every hour, every day, every second, because you need a constant new thing. TikTok has been so well designed because it's got the same effect as cartoons. Every single minute, there's something new. And we wonder why we can't even focus when, we, when we're having quiet time. I found myself like that. I was, dude, I was wrong. I was struggling at some point to just be still, you know, because my brain, and I remember even thinking sometimes when I go to bed, my brain is just constantly, I can't wind down. It's because my brain is having to filter through so much that I inundated with. And I won't lie, guys, I low-key missed the time before social media where you just lived, <laughs> you know, you just existed. And, and it just it was what it was i mean it's beautiful social media is, is a nice thing it's nice to be able to connect i met some of my good friends on social media you know it, it's a nice platform i can share these kinds of things we can learn and hear the word of god but there's also the downside to it and it requires us to be very discerning it requires us to be very discerning because now the enemy is even using christians on social media platforms to deceive conversation for another day um, so yeah, I just really hope that with this video you are edified in some way, but more than anything that you're caught up with me and my, my mental space and where I'm at. And I think this is also just the direction my content is going to take. I just want to focus on Jesus. It's not about me. It's about edifying whoever's watching. It's about, you know, honoring God with the platform that he's given me and allowing him to use me and to be a vessel to bring his children into his knowledge. So, yeah, I, I hope that you guys, you know, have some good stuff to share with me in the comments. You know, maybe just let me know what, what's something that you came out with from last year. What are some big changes that maybe you were resisting? Um, also, if you have any questions or maybe some things that you'd like me to tackle on the channel, um, any type of content that you'd like me to share. Um, yeah, guys, social media breeds so much discontentment sometimes. You know, even though you have a perfectly good life, but because someone else has something else, that's why I'm just like, we were not created to see everything. We were not created to be so exposed to other people's lives because that's where the devil flourishes, discontentment, discouragement, because you feel like you're not moving fast enough. Your age mates have this, that, and the other, all because of social media. But I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you were edified, please like, please uh, comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe if you find, you know, my, my channel to be edifying to you. Um, yeah, that is my first video of 2024. I really hope that you guys will have a prosperous year. I pray that this year may bring you so much joy. I pray that this year may bring you closer with God, closer to God, that your relationship may grow exponentially with God, that you may be a light in, in the corner that you are in. That doesn't mean that you have to be a social media influencer. Maybe that just means you need to preach Jesus to your brother or your sister at home. Maybe it means you need to invite someone to church. Maybe it means at work you need to be a better example of God's love. Ministry doesn't have to be on Instagram. <laughs> I'm very passionate there, but I love you guys so much and I'm so glad to be back and I, I just, let's have a good year, man. Let's have a year filled with just so much joy, so much grace. Um, and I can't wait to share what 
God has to say, you know, to you through me. All my love. Mwah.